So let's get stuck into the build. Okay, so these are all the instructions that you get. Um, it's fairly basic. Um, they say to put the undercarriage on, then the tail, then the wings, um, and then fasten the um, control horns, etc., up. Um, put the motor in. I don't need to do that because mine's the PMP version. And then glue on these bits and the, the vortex generators as well. Um, the only thing I'm going to do is you do have to actually glue the wings in so that so it's you know it's a one-piece model it's not going to come to bits um, but I'm uh, I'm just going to get well it's I can't really get the horns on this before I glue it in because you've got to slide it in place I could get one side on of course um, but on the tail I'm just going to get the control horns fastened on first before I glue that because I just think it'll be a little bit easier so uh, we'll get that started first so I'll get my trusty tray and empty the uh, control horns and into there. So uh, I've got everything in one place. We'll um, just put one of the aerons on for now. So we'll go with this one. So I'll put a couple of these in diagonally. Fasten that into there. And then just get the plate on the other side. There we go, that's come through there nice enough. Um, just need to check to see how many of those there are, because um, they might, it, sometimes they only um, supply with enough to do a diagonal like that rather than all four, so we'll see. Um, but now we should be able to slide that into the fuselage. Let's get the speed controller out of the way. Let's have a look. I might have to. Okay, so, um, yeah, it just slides into place. The only thing is, because it slides in, there's, um, normally I like to use um, something like um, foam tack, but that's not gonna work really because that's a, it's a contact adhesive uh, and you have to sort of wait for it to go off and then, then you would slide it into place, but I think it will basically just get stuck um, because it'll, it'll stick as soon as you get this over the the glue so i think what i'm going to do is try some yuhu pour which i know is also a contact adhesive but you can kind of put that on uh, and leave it to dry um, so yeah i'm just going to pour some glue into here and here and there and along these bits and uh, just get that glued into place 
Okay, so got that glued into place. I'm just gonna set that to one side now and just um, get the control horns put on the uh, tail. So, same procedure as before. We'll get a couple of these. Well, they're really long, so I might have to uh, cut those down actually with some uh, cutters because they're really sticking out. I will put all four into this. Okay, so for the horizontal stab, um, that I can use foam tack because it just slides in from the back um, and it's fairly straightforward. So, and foam tack is my preferred glue for gluing foam. Decent amount on here and slotted in here. Got to always put the lid on quick with foam tack because it has that tendency to keep on coming out. And then we will get this, slide this into position. Probably got a bit too much on there and there, which we don't need. can always clean that off later um, and then as we've always with foam tack you sort of move it in and out just to sort of get it spread all about and then we'll take it out and we'll let that dry for a few minutes and then you put it back in for the last time and it holds it pretty good Okay, so that's had a little time to dry, so we'll get that slotted in. And this is the problem with foam tack, it grips pretty tight. Okay, so that's pretty solid already, um, but Obviously, once the foam tack properly dried, then it will be really solid. But you probably couldn't pull that out now. And uh, yeah, that's in. Nice movement there on the elevator. So now all I've got to do is get the rudder fastened on, which is basically just looks like it goes on with the hinges. So we have just got to have a look at the best way of gluing the hinges in place. Right, so what have I been doing? So I've put these on. Um, I've just used a foam tack for those. That was fairly straightforward, obviously. Wing tips or vortex generators, or even there for when you're doing a knife edge, just to give you that extra bit of stabilization, I would imagine. And then for the rudder, I decided in the end, it would be easier just to uh, CA these on because um, they went into the foam uh, a fair way, so it was quite deep. So you could sort of pour the uh, 
thick CA on top, let that soak in and level off, and then I gave it a blast of kicker, and that seems to have secured that nicely, and it's nice and uh, um, centered as well, which is good. Um, so all I've got to do now is, and look, this speed controller is really annoying me, it keeps coming out. I suppose I should probably just put the lid on. I might do that. Okay, that should hopefully stop the speed controller keep falling out. Um, so my next thing was, um, I've got to put the undercarriage on. I thought I'd do that before I connect up um, the control rods to the back, because I think it might just be a bit easier um, so this apparently just pushes in until you hear a click. So let's see. Well, I wouldn't say it was a click, but um, it kind of snaps into position and they seem solid enough. They're not going to fall out, so they're not particularly heavy, so that's fine. Um, so then I've just got to glue the um, sort of fairings onto these. Uh, I guess they're going to go something like that. No, they're not, sorry, something like that, maybe. Uh, get the, I think I'll leave the spats off because they're tiny little wheels. They're gonna get clogged up, I think, on our field. I'll get the servo centered and the control horns hooked up and then we'll be ready to put the radio gear in. So let's just cut one of these. And see how it fits. Again, I'm going to probably go for a little bit of foam tack on this and uh, just put some glue in there and then along the top as well. Yeah, so the foam tacks work quite well with that, so I'll do the same with this one. Just cut this molding piece on and then, sorry cut the molding piece off I should say we'll get the foam tack in there good amount on the top get the lid on quick And we'll just sort of push that up like that. So we get the foam tack all smeared all over the place. It's starting to feel tacky now. So then we'll peel it off. We'll give it a few minutes to go off. And we'll secure it in place. Right then, so on the carriage is on. Doesn't look too bad actually. Uh, these spats are very sort of delicate, so I don't know how long they'll last, but we'll see. But the uh, the foam uh, pieces there have gone on quite nicely. Um, so yeah, next thing really is just to get the uh, servos hooked up and get my receiver set up. And then um, we've got the joy of trying to put the um, decals on is going to be the huge one that goes across the wing so it's going to be good fun um, I've decided not to put this on because uh, I'm not sure I like it the look of it and also I thought it would be a nice tight fit in here but it's actually um, it's really loose as you can kind of see there um, and it kind of sticks up as well I thought it would fit flush um, so I could obviously trim that down and make it fit uh, a bit neater, but yeah, as it is, it's just going to wob. You know, even if it's glued in place, I think it's just going to wobble around. It's going to be quite hard to get it straight, uh, and it'll probably just get knocked off. 
So I think I'm going to leave that off uh, and then maybe at some point I'll look at trimming this down and fixing it in place. But I'm just going to fly it first without it and see, uh, see how it goes. I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. Got to get the prop on, got to get the nose cone put on and then, yeah, just get the uh, decors on and we're, uh, we're about ready. So that's me done for tonight and I will uh, be back in a split second for you guys. Um, but it'll actually be the next day and I'll, um, I'll get these uh, control horns, um, control surfaces hooked up to the servos. Right then, so next job now is I have to hook up the control linkages. So we've got these two for the uh, air runs, um, just some short ones there. And then we've got these longer ones for the rudder and elevator. Um, there's one slightly longer than the other, so um, there's only one way these can go really. So I'll use my servo tester um, to get the servers, servos centered. Um, now the only tricky thing is we're doing this now is because I've got the wings on, so it's a little bit awkward to um, handle, but uh, I'll try and uh, get this on the bench, get the uh, servo centered and then get the servo arm screwed on and then we'll hook these up. So I'll get the elevator and rudder done first. So I'll quickly get those done now and then uh, show you the results. Okay, so uh, where have I got to now? So you can see I've got the uh, decals on or stickers, whatever the, how we want to call them. Um, bit of a nightmare job as usual. Um, they're very, very thin stickers um, so they do once they're on they, they um, once they are on they go on pretty nicely but um, yeah they are extremely uh, fiddly to get on uh, and I you know I'll confess I'm not the world's best person at applying these things I get kind of a little bit frustrated with them um, but basically I to be honest I couldn't even be bothered to tackle the one on this side so I've put these two um, stickers on which I think look quite good anyway with this graphic here along the wing. I've gone over that with my iron because it was particularly tricky to get it into this um, sort of curve here, contour, whatever you want to call it. Um, but the irons kind of shrunk it down quite nicely there. Um, there are a few wrinkles in it though but it looks fine for what it is. And then we got them on the tail and the rudder there. And then underneath, I've just got these two flashes there, so I can see it, uh, see which way around it is. These ones actually went on quite nicely, um, but the others were rather tricky to say the least. I've got all the push rods connected up to the servos and tested these with my uh, servo tester. So there's the uh, rudder one, elevator one that side, and then obviously the two ailerons. Um, the only issue I had was that the little pin that goes through the control horn on this aileron uh, snapped off. Um, so I had to dig around in my spares box to try and find um, a uh, clevis that would fit that control rod, but I'd got one. So that was all good. So uh, next thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get the prop and the spinner on. Um, so let me uh, see if I can zoom in a little bit more. So we've got to get the um, adapter on first, prop adapter, so that just pushes on. Then we've got the collet, that goes over there. And then we need the back of the spinner. goes on there. Then we've got the prop. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to need any of these prop washers or adapters, whatever we want to call them, so we'll, we'll check. Um, yes we do, because as you can see that's wobbling around a fair bit. So let's just find the right one for this, probably say that one, 
indeed it is. So we'll just get that one off. Now we push that into there. That's got that. Whoops. And that goes on there. That's better. And then we've got the little uh, prop nut there. That's not going to go in there, is it? Do you know what? I think I'm going to need one on this side as well, actually, because that's not going to work. Right, so had a bit of a nightmare with the uh, prop adapter. Um, seems like it's just a really cheap prop adapter, and uh, I just could not get it to fit with the spinner. Um, there just wasn't enough thread left on the uh, on the nut. Uh, sorry, on the end of the uh, prop adapter to get the nut on. Um, so it was just a nightmare, to be honest. Um, so I found another one that I had, um, which just screws on with this sort of um, nose cone shaped nut. Um, so that's going to be fine for the time being. I'll just give that a go like that. It looks fine, but uh, yeah, that's something to be aware of. Um, so what I've got to do now is um, I'm just going to put a bit of the old uh, goop on these things just to secure them on the back of the um, control horns uh, and then my next job is I've just got to set up uh, the FreeSky S6R because it there's quite a bit of setup involved in this because you have to calibrate it um, and do various other bits and bobs to it to get the uh, the gyro set up and, and so it learns the surfaces so um, yeah that's uh, my next job so once I've done this I'll, uh, I'll come back and basically the model's going to be ready to fly Right then, the Sabre is ready. I have got my receiver installed. So I've put that, uh, mounted that here on this little ledge. So that was, that was perfect. Um, and you know, that's because this is a stabilized receiver. It needs to be nice and solid and pointing in a certain direction. Um, so um, yeah, that was nice that I could mount it on there. I've fastened, uh, well, mounted the speed controller down here and with a sticky tab. And then the battery just slots in sideways like that. Um, so that goes in quite nicely. That's actually a thousand milliamp battery and I'll be using 1300 milliamp, but that balances the CG nicely as well about there. Um, and it's fairly flat, which is kind of how you want 3D planes. You don't necessarily want them to be nose heavy. So uh, when I put the 1300 in, it will be slightly nose heavy, but I can always try pushing that back a little bit. Um, but We've got, I've got my radio all set up, so we've got loads of movement, which is what you want on the ailerons and same on the rudder, um, same on the elevator and same on the rudder as well. I've took the battery off because it's, um, it's actually, uh, I've, I've run it down probably a bit too much to be honest. It's, um, I need to put it back into a storage charge. This is my test battery that I use on my bench and I've used it a few too many times, I think. That's why the servos were juddering just then. Uh, I've got the um, antenna from the receiver going at a right angle, so I've got that one there just fastened to the wing and then the other one's going down there. So that's all good. Um, so yeah, it's ready for the maiden. Um, unfortunately, we've got some pretty bad weather now coming up in the UK for the next week or so, so it's going to be a little while before I get to maiden this. Um, but yeah, I am looking forward to flying this and just, um, you know, really giving it a bit of abuse, I guess, and uh, just learning to, to try and fly um, with some sort of uh, 3D aerobatics, although uh, it's going to, you know, I'm nowhere near the level that uh, I'd like to be at. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a learning curve. This is probably going to take a few bashes on the way, but that's exactly what it's for, really. So that concludes my um, unbox and assembly of the uh, Volantex Sabre 920. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a thumbs up, give me a like, uh, and of course, please hit the subscribe button as well. I'm trying to build up to a thousand subscribers. Um, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, so if you like what I'm doing on the channel, if you're into fixed wing RC, whether it's balsa, EDFs, foam 
planes like this one, um, FPV, all that sort of stuff, then uh, you definitely want to be subscribing to my channel. Thanks again for watching and I will see you soon for the next one.